Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. There was an episode zero before this, but uh, we were just getting things set up, and I also solicited uh, comments about what other mods I should add to the series. Uh, just remember, this is a career series, so we have a budget, we have science and everything, but we've jump-started it a little bit. And uh, so the mods that I added on top of the ones that I already had uh, are near futures, electronics, solar, um, spacecraft, and everything but the prop propulsion, I think, I've got in here. Uh, none of the ships, though. So, uh, yeah. Oh, construction was the other one. Yes. So, uh, the near future mods except for propulsion, hull camera VDS, aviation lights, deployable airbags, Kerbal joint reinforcement, uh, fuse box, and stage recovery. I'm only testing out stage recovery. I'm not sure I'm, uh, I'm going to use it rather than FMRS. We'll see which one is better for, for this whole situation. Other than that, uh, you can take a look at the zero episode video in order to find out more about the base mods that I'm using. And of course, so uh, we've got our little uh, rocket launcher here. This is the two-stage version. Remember, we're going for pretty consistent uh, launch uh, launchers and really the stuff that's going to be interesting is the payloads so uh, this is the two-stage version and I noticed something I noticed that uh, procedural tanks doesn't have procedural costs yet I, I know that the mod uh, maintainers are going to be adding that in so I'm not complaining but I, we have to be aware of that since we do have to pay attention to the cost so uh, the Mu fuel depot that I put into orbit uh, in the zero episode as well as the lander that we used probably weren't cost efficient because of that however uh, our launcher it probably isn't too bad off uh, considering that uh, this tank here is 3200 uh, I think there's pretty good value for money as far as uh, launcher uh, volumes are concerned so so we've got uh, we're using those tanks in the launcher but we really can't use them in small payloads so that's an interesting point. Uh, being cost conscious, I also noticed that the strut connector here has a cost of 42. Uh, of course, uh, fans of Douglas Adams know that 42 is the answer to everything. I'm sure somebody's pointed that out before, but uh, I might as well. I, I just uh, noticed now, so yeah. Anyway, uh, this is our payload this time. Uh, we've got uh, two payloads, actually. We've got an orbiter that is going to do uh, science and detection around the moon and so we're going to have it uh, have it detect for carbonite mainly and uh, whatever else I, I just slapped on every detector I could get it's pretty expensive uh, if we take a look uh, right now the vehicle is uh, 76,000 we take that off it's about 14,000 so that's just that now I think I need to consider putting some more electrics on it. Uh, one other mod I put on was fuse box, so uh, that nobody actually uh, recommended that, but I think it'd be a good idea. But just taking this off, you can see uh, drain was how much? Okay, so drain was 15 and generation was six. Uh, no, eight. Sorry. So I need some more solar panels. I made this before adding fuse box, otherwise I would have uh, figured that out. Actually, uh, also the order I made this was a little bit odd since I made the rover first and then slapped this on top, as you can see from the from the way it uh, separated. And I also want to add some token solar panels to this. So uh, this, of course, is uh, what's going to be bringing the rover down. I don't know exactly how this. Uh, so this is the rover, that, the pack rat rover. I haven't built uh, with all it with all the pieces because well they're expensive. And in fact, the seats I used in it are actually the default seats because if you look, the external command seats here are only 200, whereas the seats on the Pack Rat Rover, once we get to the end here, these are 1200. So I don't know what benefit they bring. Uh, they have the KS module grab on them, so we could use them with Kerbal Attachment System, but um, other than that, I think maybe we could just leave it as is. Uh, so uh, that's cheaper. I didn't have to put the roof rack uh, since that's more expensive uh, or the science crate. And uh, yeah, I also added a little detector there. 
But uh, it's this thing that, that I don't really... This rover delivery system. I assume there's supposed to be a decoupler. And so I put a decoupler. But I'm still not entirely clear about how all this works. Uh, I did put a decoupler right somewhere. Oh, maybe not. Huh. Okay. Let me put a decoupler. See, these are the things. Sometimes, sometimes gotta figure this out. Okay, I upgraded most of the mods, so uh, like everything updated right after I made that uh, zeroth video. So I have done that, and hopefully that all works out, including uh, the update to procedural fairings which will allow these to eject properly, I think. Okay, so I think I've got it all sorted out, or at least uh, sorted out uh, reasonably well. So we've got, a, well, really an overpowered launcher here uh, for this purpose, but hey, uh, again, I don't want to change things up too much. One thing I did do was add the gimbling engines on the outside here, so we had a lot of problems with that last time. So now these are LVT-45, so I don't anticipate having problems with that. In fact, I think I can take the fins off because of that. The extra gimbling should handle that pretty well. We're a very uh, streamlined launcher, so no problems with that. I'm going to... I made so many changes to this, maybe I should call it Rover Delivery A just to distinguish it. Alright, uh, with that, uh, let's take this out to the launch pad. Okay, so this is our first real colonization launch. We've got our pack rat rover and our resource detector. Uh, well, without further ado, let us just uh, go ahead and light this thing. Okay, very nice. Now I have to remember that I've got FAR installed. It's a little bit uh, tough because uh, I'm so used to playing on Kerbin just stock that I'm tempted to not do my gravity turn, not really gravity turn, my pitch program, it's not a gravity turn. A gravity turn is if it just uh, you just nudge it over and it that does everything naturally. Uh, pitch program is if you're controlling the pitch at, at every step of the way. So pitch program, um, I, uh, I'm tempted to do it too late uh, when I see Kerbin then. Of course, this is very patently Kerbin. So gotta remember that. Now, a uh, word about our launcher. Obviously, it would be more efficient for me to just customize the launcher uh, depending on the payload. Oh, going the wrong way there. Um, depending on the payload. So, I am being a little bit inefficient on that, but that's because I want to keep uh, consistent launchers and not trying to reinvent everything every time. Uh, which will help speed things along and make the payloads more the focus. It is still rotating. This is very annoying. I thought that uh, putting the gimbling engines on the outside would help me uh, cut this rotation, but it's not. I guess I will have to put the vernier engines on. Verner engines. Okay, but uh, yeah, so, but given that we're using the cons consistent launchers, uh, we need to come up with better names. Right now I'm calling the one-stage version the Express, the two-stage version the Kerbin Express, and the three-stage version the Moon Express. But that's not very, those aren't very good names because this one would technically be the Kerbin Express even though it's uh, going to the Moon. And of course the Express doesn't really say anything. It does go into Kerbin Orbit of course, so uh, no real particular reason to use those names. Um, so themes maybe can be suggested. I'll come up with something. I mean, uh, don't feel obligated or anything. But if you do have an idea, go ahead and throw it out there. Uh, I'm really irritated by this. So I guess I should have at least kept the fins. If the rotation isn't too bad. The fins would have probably helped out. And actually, uh, SAS is just not doing its full job. Look at the roll. So, I mean, SAS could be doing much more than it's doing right now. And actually, I could be doing much more too, because I, of course, have control. Okay, I think we're good for fairing separation. Maybe... Yeah. 
Okay, good. So uh, I wanted to see that the update to uh, procedural fairings worked out nicely, and it does. Okay, so we'll just coast up to Abwapsis now. Wow, that, that's amazing. I didn't think we would get all the way to orbit just on the first stage, but that seems to be the case. Uh, FAR is making it a lot easier than... Uh, of course, uh, the reason uh, FAR is making it easier is because I'm so streamlined about things. But, yeah, even more so than I thought it would be. I might have to uh, readjust my estimations for what these launchers do and uh, what their payload is capacity is because really actually I could have just sent all this on the first stage I didn't even need the second stage this time uh, the um, engines uh, this this tank has like uh, 2000 or so Delta V I don't trust what it says here about that one uh, so it's got like 2000 more than 2000 so it could have uh, gotten us to the moon and landed this without any trouble yeah, so gotta keep that in mind now. We don't want to uh, kill our budget. We've got to colonize not just the moon. I mean, I want to colonize uh, Val as well, particularly. I would like to uh, have Val. Maybe, maybe after Val, we could go for Duna. So Val is actually probably easier than Duna in some ways. Well, no atmosphere, right? So, easier to calculate everything. Easier to get the modules into the same place. Pinpoint landings on Duna are a little bit more difficult than pinpoint landings on Val. Okay. Okay, I think again, uh, maybe we can get a little bit closer than that. Uh, this way. I think the optimal for the scanners are like 250 kilometers. I want to get just under that, like that. Okay. Alright, uh, since I don't want to hunt for the node, I'll let it turn us towards that. Very good. I'll have to, once I make more complex probes, I'm going to have to start using Infernal Robotics to make them neat. I saw Bob Fitch do some really wonderful things with with that, but I haven't played around with Infernal Robotics as a way of making really spectacular probes yet. Okay, I think we should be uh, good for charge. Yes, we are. All right. Okay, overdid it. Well, not bad. Let's see. Okay, so we continue actually. Okay, that's about where I wanted. Alright, so we're off to the moon for what will be the first of many many occasions because we're going to settle there now we're in the lunar sphere of influence and uh, don't worry uh, we're going equatorial of course but I've got uh, fuel on the probe so that we can uh, increase its inclination and put it into a proper scanning orbit so that's not a problem uh, we'll adjust its orbit and make sure it can do its scanning across the as much of the surface as we uh, care to scan. So, yeah, but we'll be uh, aiming for something equatorial with the Packrat rover. Hmm. Some weird lighting effect that I just noticed there. All right. Yeah. How strange. Okay, that's pretty acceptable. Now, like I said, we're going to uh, 
be sending the orbiter into a different inclination. So in fact, I'm going to separate it now. Okay, and then I'm going to head on off to it. It's got its own little controller. And let's light this. And let's see about its inclination. Actually, I think, uh, yeah, we we would have enough uh, fuel to uh, bring it back around if we wanted to put it to equatorial again. If for some reason we wanted to do that. Whoa, okay, hold on. Okay, I think I'll take that. Oh, there's some some glitching going on here with the UI. Now I kept the previous installation with all the previous mods just in case. Oh, uh, this is a problem. I haven't actually uh, got a mod that changes the UI itself. So I don't know what this is all about. Okay. So if anybody knows what, why it's doing this, uh, please uh, mention it in the comments below. Display Covenant Hotspots. Okay. Start resource scan. Sure. Let's extend the other solar panels. I didn't uh, action group them. But once we turn on all the detectors, I think we're going to need them. Let's get them all situated so that uh, they're facing the sun properly. Uh, maybe the other way around would be better. Uh, okay. That's good. Alright, so. Now what does this do? Uh, magnetometer, start or scan. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. This is uh, start radar scan. Uh, that's the altimetry. Oh, I didn't realize it went like that. Darn it. Clips the, the solar panel a little bit. Just that, but no, nothing else. Okay, this is the mag dual technique mag magnetometer for... Uh, Oh, it gives a science. I didn't even realize that. Oh, sure. Uh, transmit science back. I put an antenna on here, of course. But uh, that's for... Huh. That's for... Uh, what you got? It's a KSP Interstellar. And I thought it would give me information about... about uh, antimatter and all that, but I guess not. Okay, uh, analyze data. Huh. No signs for that. Start multispectral scan. I guess we have to start the scan first before analyzing data. Okay, uh, so all of this should pop up on a, on a map, right? Mm hmm. Well, we've got a lot of stuff here. Scan sat stuff. Front robotic stuff. Stage recovery. So I'll have that one. That one. Sure. All of the above. Okay, so scan sat big map. Let's see what's going on here. Well, we've got our two uh, orbiting ships, if you will. Flags. This scan starting out. Let's get a legend. Hmm. 
not totally sure about how this resource uh, resource scanning is going to work. Obviously, we see the carbonite already. That's fine. Not too sure about the rest of it. But we've got it going. Let's uh, uh, go to our rover and see where we should land that. Well, when you take a look at it, maybe we should just focus on this crater here. Obviously, we haven't done a thorough scanning just yet. Oh, uh, this probably shouldn't happen. Uh, but when you take a look at it, we've got a little patch there to aim for. Not much else by way of indications. And of course, uh, that is a place that we've landed a Kerbal before in the stock series. So that is good. Yeah, we've got a lot of fuel on this, so I'm not going to be subtle about it. That will do. Okay, so first landing on the moon in this series. So again, we are colonizing the moon for those who didn't get the premise of the series so far. Uh, that is the idea. And again, we're going to be colonizing many things. So look forward to that. We're going to head to the north of this crater, obviously. Okay. Pretty much going to be heading straight down. Oh, is, uh, is it our lights that are causing some of these? Why is there such a huge light there? We'll try and keep our trash close by. I think it'll be on a trajectory to be nearby right now, so yeah. Okay, I pressed spacebar, but it didn't do anything. Let's try again. All right. Now, one thing I don't know is how well it can land on this, so we'll, we'll have to be very gentle about it. I didn't think to add uh, other landing struts since, well, it looked pretty landing strutty as it is, and of course, more cost. So, should have put a docking port instead of a decoupler in, in retrospect. Then maybe this thing would have been more reusable. It's got a lot of fuel in. Uh, did I? No, I didn't. I should have also put a little uh, pipe end point. But we could still grab it with the claw. We could still grab it with the claw. So that that's a thing. Yeah, but a pipe end point would have been good for uh, for a Kerbal attachment system. We could have used it as a fuel tank. Oh, I didn't actually have landing lights on this. I just had the front lights here. So this little pack rat rover has the lights. Uh, these are custom wheels for it. Uh, adjusted wheels from the normal stock wheels. I don't know what the difference is. Uh, and it's got this little generator in the back. Oh, it's like that. It doesn't collide. Okay. Uh, I guess we can put on brakes. Is that a, yeah? Okay, good. Um, right. Well, in that case, we're gonna have to have this thing fly off, huh? Oh, but it doesn't have a controller. Okay. Oh darn. So. My pack rat rover has a little burden on it. <laughs> this was unexpected. Okay, so deployment of this not quite right. Hmm. 
No, indeed. We're going to have to send something over to pick this thing up. Probably should have done that anyway. So, I didn't expect that these things were totally non collidable like that. Oh, can it slide off? Uh, looks dangerous, but... Yeah, okay. Let's go back. Oh, we've still got brakes on. All right. Oh, but it's got a little halo now. <laughs> I sh I I didn't have a stack separator. I haven't unlocked stack separators yet. Uh, otherwise, I used one, but uh, I put it on the wrong way around. Uh, hold on. Let's see if we can do a uh, perform. So uh, minerals, uh, parts per million, substrate. So we've got some substrate here. I don't know how much is a good amount. Uh, 0.32, is that good? Well, we'll we're going to rove around and see. Um, soil analysis, looks like uh, we can transmit that. Okay, let's do that. Of course, I put an antenna on this as well. And it's got its little generator, so hopefully that will keep it well. Uh, it uh, takes a little bit of time. So did I get all the signs from that? Oh, it looks like I did. Okay. Alright, well it's got a little halo, but at least it didn't uh, have to carry that lump around. And Okay, this is going to be annoying actually. Well, I guess I'll just let it regen. Okay, looking good. Now, this is not all we're doing in this uh, episode, so I'm going to have to go back to VAB to get on to the next thing. And that is to uh, launch a carbonite miner. Once again, trying that out. I'm just going to uh, park this and let this be our... Well, we could even use that, but that's debris, so it probably wouldn't work as well. Gonna uh, have this be our target for the carbonite line lander, so that we can uh, mine here in this little bubble. But uh, one thing I want to do is turn off the bubbles now, and we'll just have the miner aim for this. So let me switch to this and turn off the indication. Okay, so hide carbonite hotspots. We will do that. All right, looking good so far. A little bit of a problem with the rover for a sec there, but it got itself free. Now let's go back to the VAB. You know, for some reason, that previous launch didn't cost as much as I thought it would. I wonder what's up about that. But anyway, here's our carbonite miner launch. Only a single stage here, as you can see. So we're keeping it nice and trim. Uh, this is the miner in question. And if we look at the Delta V stats, they look like that. So really what we're going to do is we're going to have this uh, tank and engines hang out in orbit around around the moon. And I have actually put a docking port at the top of it. So we could possibly refuel this and reuse it. Uh, I would li have liked to put the big docking port, you know, the 2.5 meter one, but we haven't unlocked it yet. So we're going to have to hang on before doing that. But in subsequent versions of this, Maybe I'll put the big docking port and we could really reuse this stuff in a proper manner. So I'm planning not to just ditch this. It'll be in orbit around the moon and reusable. Maybe I should put a controller on it. I wonder if it'll make it too unstable if I, if I do that. Hmm. This could be a bad idea. Let's get our answer to everything. Okay, hopefully that'll help uh, keep things nice and stable. So, yeah, uh, same sort of arrangement here, actually, with the docking port and the controller in there. Uh, the batteries, obviously. Uh, fuel tank uh, to uh, bring it down. It's got, as you can see, about uh, 2300 Delta V. So it can easily get down to the surface and back up again and have it a fuel. All it's going to do is uh, carry up some fuel. It'll convert it itself for now. 
So we're going to uh, try out the conversion here. In future versions, uh, what we're going to have is uh, a carbonite uh, mining, uh, a carbonite tank and a carbonite engine, right? This carbonite engine is what we're going to use. And maybe that's that's going to be okay. I'll, I'll do the math on that, whether that's really more efficient. But um, then we can just bring the carbonite up to the station and convert it at the station. But for now, I want to try this out. Everything's in line, so we don't have any fuel lines. Hopefully, it'll work out. I am using, uh, I think it comes with Carbonite Plus rather than Carbonite. And uh, Carbonite, of course, now comes with the USI Colonization Pack, which is the main mod I'm using in this. So we've got the mini drill here. And it's lighter. It costs the same as all the other drills. All the other drills cost 1500 as well. It's just lighter. And... Um, yeah, well, if I've got it, I'm going to use it, right? So we'll see if it works out okay. Otherwise, uh, it'll have to be one of these heavy ones. Actually, two of these heavy ones because of the way I fit it here. Uh, maybe just one. Maybe I could uh, move the carbonite tank to the top and uh, just put a, one of the big ventral drill assemblies there. That'll be at 1.75 tons, though. And I don't know. I don't, I don't want a 1.75 ton drill. Everything is pretty heavy as it is. The carbonite converter is two tons here. So, anyway, since I've got the part, I'm definitely going to use the smallest drills I can. No point not to, especially since they cost the same. Now, if they decide to up the cost of the small drills, that would be a separate issue. Um, maybe it's actually in a different um, technology. Because, uh, um, I mean, obviously I've got it unlocked. But maybe the big drills are in the lower technology bracket and the mini drills actually in the higher technology bracket and I just don't realize it because I've got them unlocked. Okay, so. Looks like we're all configured and ready to go. Let's see how this works out. We're going to aim for the same spot that we put our rover. Okay, so it looks like we're ready for launch. So line the engines and launch. Yeah, I've got the gimbling engines again, so that's good. Looks to be controlling the roll so far. So, this is not the final version of how we're going to exploit carbonites on the moon, okay? This is just a little test, test run. Because the carbonite uh, miner that I tried in my mod showcase series, uh, I didn't do it properly, so I just want to try things out. And uh, after that, we'll complicate matters a little bit more, as we'll be having a full base, so we'll have to have uh, the Kerbals get in on the act. Wow, this is going up pretty fast, isn't it? I really need to smooth out my launch profile here. Not doing uh, really ideal launches right now. Okay, I'll shut off there. Dump the fairing. Okay, good. So now, did I action group the solar panels? Yes, I did. Always a pleasant surprise. Using these. It's a rare occasion where these uh, seem to be the better choice. Now, I don't know if I've got enough solar panelry. We'll see about that. But it's a start. Uh oh. Come on, game. Okay. Okay, pretty good. All right, now for the transfer to the moon. So in the next episode, I'm going to transfer some basic supplies, uh, habitat sort of stuff, make sure that we've got spaces for the Kerbals to live, and uh, food, water, oxygen, that sort of thing. Uh, we're not going to 
uh, worry about in situ replenishment just yet. In other words, uh, making sure that they can get, uh, for instance, uh, supplies from the moon itself. We'll tackle that separately at a later date. We'll go in the same direction, I think. Come on. Okay, well, if that's as close as it wants me to get, I'll go with that for now. We've got to be landing this thing anyway. And just a reminder, I'll, I'll be putting the full list of the mods involved in this in the video description, so I won't have all the links to the mods, uh, because that would be a very, very big description, but I will have the list. So, um, so if you're curious about that, you can take a look at those. I don't have any of the visual mods, not even the environmental visual enhancements yet. Uh, we'll we'll take a look at that once I figure out whether this is all nice and stable right now. So far, it looks like there's a, a few issues that I might need to be worried about. Hmm, SAS's ability to keep this thing steady not so good. Ooh, Eclipse! Oh, going too far. Wow, look at that. Right, so we didn't quite make it right here. Let's see if we can correct that. Crash course? Uh, maybe not. Let's not do that. Okay, maybe a lot of retrograde. I'll take that. Okay, so, on our way to the moon again. It's transiting this way, I didn't expect that. I noticed our electric charge diminishing on the way, and I don't know if the moon is completely blocking the sun's light, or whether it's, I mean, it obviously looks partial, but I don't know if that's actually what the solar panels are detecting. I decided to turn our craft around just to give the solar panels as much of a chance to get sunlight as possible. Uh, it might be that uh, we're going to be in the dark for a bit. Yeah, it looks like it. So let's say SAS off doesn't really help. So what uh, the lights? Yeah. Okay, lights off helps though not enough 39 minutes I don't think will get us there oh the panel still haven't turned around come on oh uh, I guess they're not just not detecting the light yeah blocked by the moon okay uh, well we're probably going to run out of electric charge then unless the moon makes it quick oh okay it did good all right on we go so we're in the moon's vicinity right now I've plotted our retro burn into orbit and then we will leave this in orbit potentially for future use should have put some sort of solar panels or some way to replenish electric charge on it though Looks good. Set as target. Very nice. We could probably lower it a little bit more than that. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. Remember, we're uh, leaving this whole thing in orbit, so we're we don't want to uh, lower it all the way to the ground just yet. But uh, a bit of an eccentric orbit, not a problem. Okay, so. There we are. Let us uh, separate. Just double check everything. Looks good. Okay, clean separation. Gonna jump back over here and name this thing. If I can find the probe core. Uh, I should separate the decoupler as well. Oh no, it doesn't want to do that. 
Uh, I really need those stack separators. Okay, so this doesn't work. We can still claw this though. So we can still use it as a part. Ah, there we go. Oh, not enough electric charge. Ah, it doesn't have any electric charge, so I can't rename it or do anything with it. Okay. All right, in that case, we'll just have to claw it and uh, if we want to reuse that. All right, I'll have to remember that that's there, though. Okay. Well, we might as well get the gear down now. And, yeah, light's on. Just two of them. What we do have once again is a huge amount of fuel, so... And of course this thing is supposed to be able to refuel itself. So we're going to take advantage of that. Once again. Okay, looks lined up. I'm gonna focus on the moon. Looks a little bit south. Flickering of the UI is very annoying right now. So again, any information about this flickering UI bug, please tell me. Obviously it's a mod, I don't get it in stock. Uh, probably should have put a reaction wheel on this thing. The probe's own torque is not great, or at least some sort of uh, RCS ports would have been good. Okay, can't see too much more from the map view. So probably next time I'm going to look to start the orbital station around the moon as well as get some life support supplies down here. So that's my current plan. Oh, right now this lander is not handling very well. Uh, serves me right for uh, being cheap on the reaction control power. Obviously even this lander was built on a budget, which is why I went with the little orange. Uh, you've noticed I've been consistently using the little orange thrusters. Well, they're very cheap. What can I say? Okay, we're on the ground finally. Alright, uh, did I have the drills action grouped? Yes, I did. Good. So there we go, we've got drills out. Okay, now if I recall, they have to be told to extract carbonite. Yes, and they are. Well, that one is. Uh, let's see, this one needs to be told separately. Good, electric charge seems to be holding out great. Carbonite is filling up. Let's uh, see the conversion. And yes, we are converting. We've got uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer filling up there. So all is well with our carbonite extraction. Our very first attempt at it. Not the most efficient attempt. We'll uh, tighten it up a little bit. Get better facilities and all that. And the next thing really is to make sure that we have a, so let's, let's call this, let's rename vessel, Carbonite Miner Alpha. And this is actually a lander. Okay, then this UI. Um, no, not that. We'll try and make sure to use that later. Now this one I want to uh, rename vessel. And this is a rover, correct. Rover Alpha. I know I'm 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 not really good at names, but uh, we'll, I'll I'll try and think of some theme to go with. Um, in my realism overall series for missions, I use sci-fi authors. Obviously, in the EDB 
mission control series, I use the moons of Saturn, and of course all the launches are called Saturn. I'll, I'll try and think of something. Anyway, so this is the, the mission thus far, and oh, it looks like it's prioritizing liquid fuel over oxidizer. Uh, I think it'll be all right. All right, so yeah, so we got uh, Orbiter to detect resources. We got a rover. We've got uh, Keithane Mining Lander. I did remember to put the radio connector port here just in case we need that sort of thing. Though it's a little bit high, uh, Kerbal will have trouble getting to that. Might need a ladder of some kind. Uh, might be a thing to make. But uh, yeah, so this is our base. We're going to uh, set up base around here. And, and you can look forward to that though. So we're going to get the life support stuff here next. And then we're also going to have some sort of uh, the start of an orbital station around the moon. All right, so that look forward to that in episode two. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions about what you'd like me to see me do, uh, like to see me do, and uh, keep in mind the mod list that is already existent, uh, please leave those comments in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.